see the the the, the Proverbs we read. Uh, Proverbs chapter thirty one. Can we read that Proverbs again? Can you show us that Proverbs again? Proverbs chapter thirty one. If you can, can you show us in um, NIV or NLT? If it's possible. But if you can, just show us uh, the same scripture. I know you kind of cut and cut and paste it. Um, Robert, just show us in King James. That's fine. The way you put it together, it may be difficult to do it. Uh, just show us in um, King James the way you put it together. Verse 10, then 27 to 30. So the scripture says, who can find a virtuous woman? Uh, and NIV says, a woman of character. You know, to be virtuous means, <coughs> it means to be honorable. To be virtuous means to be honorable, to be full of good characters. The Bible says, who can find her? And the Bible says, for our prize is far above rubies. And anything of value come with a cost. That means, Mothers are costly. Women are costly. Naturally, women are costly. If you have a, uh, if you have a boy versus a girl, you know how much you're going to spend on a girl, you know, for for the rest of our life. <laughs> you understand? Me? Versus, you know, guys are going to put on jeans and t-shirt and they're gone. But by the time girls start evolving to another level, you know what you're going to add to their life, what you're going to buy, you know. They're just expensive. But God placed so much value on women. And not just women, when they become a wife and a mother. And he says, who can find a virtuous woman? A woman of honor, a honorable woman. And say her pride is far above rubies. So he says, she look well to the ways of her household and eat not the bread of idleness or laziness. Our children arise up and they call her blessed, empowered to prosper, and her husband also, and he praises her. Amen. If you look at uh, this, you know, these qualities, they are so valuable. It makes the mother, the wife, the woman, extraordinarily valuable. Extraordinarily valuable. And this is, mod this is multitasking quality. She looked well to the ways of her household. He didn't know the bed of idleness. As well. So we want to talk about honoring our mothers. Honor is God's law. Honoring people is God's secret. There are laws that are established in the realm of the spirit. To honor means to esteem high and to place a value, the right value on anybody that worth that value to, to receive it. If our mothers worth the value that God has placed upon them, then this morning we want to honor them. Amen? Amen. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 13, verse 7, verse 7, please. Roman, if you show the NIV, Romans 13, 7. Give, can we all read this together, please? Give everyone. Give how many? Everyone. So, including the mothers. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. You know that what God is telling God also is telling us, don't forget IRS. So that you get, you're not getting into trouble with them. So, if you owe taxes, do what? Pay taxes. If revenue, pay revenue. Uh, we have our, our city inspector here. If you don't pay your revenue, she's coming after you. <laughs> so then, if revenue, what? Pay revenue. If Can we read the last part? If respect, respect. Everyone that deserves respect, respect them. It's God's wisdom. It's God's law. Don't ever despise anyone that deserves respect. You are making a big mistake. Whether it's your boss, whether it's your father, whether it's your mother, whether it's your husband, whether it's your wife, whether it's your brother, whether it's your pastor, whether it's the governor, whether it's the city inspector, whether it's the mayor, respect them. 
He now says, can we read the last verse? If honor, then what? Honor. Do we think mother deserve honor? Why do you think so? Why do you think so? Because God says it. If honor, honor. Ephesians chapter 6, please, verse 1 to 3. I'm taking us somewhere. So anyone that des deserves respect, respect them. Anyone that deserves honor, honor them. Because we live by God's word, not by our feeling, our emotion. And that is why a lot of Christians have been into trouble. We pick and choose what we like. We drop what we don't like, what we think is not relevant. Excuse me, the word of God is eternally relevant. Any generation is, the Bible says one generation comes, one generation what? Go. It does not matter. Eh, the word of God is eternal. God made the world by, he made this world by his word. So it's always relevant. So let's read this together, please. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Obey your parents in the Lord for what? This is right or wrong is right. Let's go on. Verse 2. We're going to read up to verse 3. Honor your father and your what? Mother. Honor what? Your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. Which is the first commandment with a promise? Which is what? The first commandment. In other words, all the commandments didn't carry any promise with them until we hit this commandment and he said this is the first one with a promise. And when God says in his word, this is the promise attached to this commandment, you will understand it will come to pass. Regard, whether you like it, whether you understand it, whether you don't understand, whether you agree, you don't agree, it will come to pass. And what is the promise? Can we read the promise together? That it may go well with you, that you may enjoy long life on earth. So that means if I don't honor my father and my mother, it may not go well with me or it will not go well with me and I may not enjoy long life. That's what God is saying. Why did God have to do that? When you see him asking, he wrote his word. It's not on my business. All I need to do is just obey you and that's all. And I enjoy long life and it will be well with me. So, he says that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Now, Mothers deserve to be honored. And I want to tell us at least five reasons why they deserve to be honored. Number one, because God commands them to be honored. God commands it for them to be honored. Rather, God commands command us to honor them. That is number one reason. Why are we honoring the mothers today? You see, if you ask an average person in the world, today's Mother's Day. Buy flowers, buy, what else do they buy? Cards, balloons, food, you know. Thank God for people like Sean say he's taking his mother to dinner tonight, you know. You see, <laughs> honoring our mothers should not be once a year. Because you don't live, you don't breathe once a year. I'm going to break to be well with you into pieces for you. I'm gonna, you're going to see this. To be well with you means to prosper, to succeed, to have good health, and to be happy or full of joy. So the first thing that I want you to recognize is that God commands us to honor them. And honoring them means you respect them. You may not agree with everything, but you honor them by respecting them, by taking care of them, by doing for them what, they, what you can do for them without any one of them necessarily doing it. For example, I would do for my mother what I can do for her without her doing it. If I cannot do it for her, am I making sense? That is understandable. But when, if, I can do it for her, then I do it for her. I take it upon myself to honor in that way. Am I making sense? We honor them by taking care of them, by respecting them, by placing value on them, by making them to feel worthy, praiseworthy. Uh, am I making sense? 
you pray to them. If you thank them for being your mother, for what they have done, what they're still doing, am I making sense? Then you're honoring them. You, you may not agree with that. I'll keep on saying that. Why well, I don't agree with my mother? Well, you don't agree with, you know, we may not agree with everybody. In fact, God says in his Bible, can two work together as if they agree? God knows that you can, we may disagree with him every now and then. God also says, come, let us what? Reason together. So you disagree with that. Come, sit down. Let's reason together. I will, I will give you some wisdom so that you can agree with me. Am I making sense? So the first reason why we have to honor them is because God what? Commands it. It is not that, okay, let's try and do it. We have to do it because it's a commandment. That's number one reason. Number two, hmm, number two is so powerful and so loaded. And it's scary. Everybody says scary. Because you don't understand the power of the word of God. That is why it's scary to me. Because by the time we break this down, you know that it's scary. In Ephesians chapter 6, we read, you know, can you go back to verse 2? Let's read verse 2 and verse 3 before I make the second point, the, re- the second reason. It says, honor your father and your mother, which is what the first commandment with a promise. With a promise. Now, if I can ask us, who, who do you think added the promise to this commandment? God? God. Do you think God's word is eternal? So, okay, now, what is the promise? That it may go well with you and that, can you show us in King James? John, he said that it may be well with you and thou may have what? Live long on the earth. The second reason you and I have to honor our mother, not once a year, not just on the Mother's Day. Thank God for cars and balloons and I don't know whether you buy them teddy bear or whatever. You buy them on dinner. Thank God for that. But you have to understand something. They are endowed with an ability, with power to make our lives to be meaningful on this earth. They are what? Endowed by God with the ability or the power to make our life (laughs) to be meaningful on this earth. In other words, they are endowed that through them, they have become a channel of blessing, a channel of blessing for success, for prosperity, for wellness, for well-being of our lives on this planet. If that source or that channel is blocked in our life, then we will suffer it. Do you know something? They are so powerful that Even wrong words from them destroy the lives of their children. And whether they understand it themselves, whether they don't understand it themselves, it doesn't matter. Your mother, your father speaking wrong words over you, or out of anger said, you you are in trouble for the rest of your life. Excuse me, if you don't tell your mother or your father to reverse it, you may be in trouble for the rest of your life. I had a story, a true story. One guy was always stealing and be in jail. Come out, steal again, be in jail. And he couldn't understand what was going on with his life. He would have done it, arrested, and put in jail. Then, w- he, then he went to pray uh, with a man of God, uh, Apostle Selma, and God revealed to him that his mother put a curse on him. That's why he kept on having that problem. So they went to his mother, and uh, the mother said, I never did that. And the Spirit of God told him that, not that he, he did it intentionally, but out of annoyance, because she, he stole his mother's money one time, and his mother said, as rat, never stop stealing. You will never stop stealing, you stupid boy. And you know rats always go around looking for food and steal food. So that came upon him, and he kept on stealing all the days of life until that curse was broken, and his mother had to reverse it. I was listening to our, um, Bishop Duncan yesterday. Bishop Duncan says he walked away from his father one time, angry. And he went to prayer meeting after that with some church folk. They were fasting and praying, 
And the Holy Spirit told him, go back to your father and apologize to him to forgive him. And he said, he told God, said, why? That, that man was wrong. It's out of, you know, out of order. And he said, the Holy Ghost told him, I know it's out of order, but you also, that does not mean you also have to be out of order because you will suffer it. So he said, he used wisdom and went to, the gra- went to his grandma and told his grandma, grandma, you know, our friend said, daddy, can you go with me so that I go, I go apologize, you know, to, you know, to daddy. And the grandma said, you're such a wise man. So the grandma followed, followed him. Then he apologized to his father. And his father said, truly you are called of God. He said, because by this time tomorrow, you have seen what will happen to you. Because his father was also in the occult. So his father had bent on punishing him. And God, would not, God would, wouldn't have defended him because he also broke law. Now, I'm telling you deep spiritual things that many of us don't know, especially in our generation and the Western world. And you, I want you to listen to me very carefully. So, B- so Bishop Duncan said, he apologized. The father forgave him. He went back to prayer meeting. He said, the f- around the same time, exactly the same time, they called him on the phone that they, he should rush home, that his father was dying. And he rushed there. And he saw his father sit down. He said, what is going on? This and this and that. And the Spirit of God told him, when you apologize and your father forgives you, the curse came back to your father. This is exactly what will happen to you right now. See, this thing are spiritual things. Honor your father and your mother that may what? Be well with you. Don't you never say curse out your father. I, I have seen children cursing out their parents. It can never be well with you. You can't live long. You don't you sit down on the street, be shot, and be killed every day? Do you understand what I'm saying now? You see, it is not our position to judge them and crucify them. All God says, honor them. Am I making sense? Let God deal with their whatever they are done against us or done for us. Leave them to God. We just honor them. Because the power that God invested in them for our lives to be blessed, for our deaths to be opened up, is so much that you don't want it to cost you a defeat in life instead of giving you victory. You don't want it to cost you, you know, a uh, uh, premature death instead of giving you long life. Am I making sense? Because God says it comes with a promise. So that power in them, all your parent needs to do is just say, you are blessed. You will succeed. Excuse me. You walk with God and carry that blessing from them. You will succeed easily. Is somebody following now? That is why when parents tell kids, you're, ju- you're such a naughty boy. You amount to nothing. You're just bad egg, bad sheep, bad, you know, the family. That's what is going to happen to them. Is somebody following now? And, and God never says, you know the word of God. We taught this many times. God never says, Words don't come to pass because you are joking. Or I didn't mean it. Words are just what words. Whether it's a, whether it's, it's a joke, <laughs> whether you are saying out of anger, you are saying it as a fun. Words are what words. They still carry the power. Amen. Without even them saying anything, for the fact that you are honoring them, you are sowing a seed of blessing into your life. The other, the B part of this, of, of this number two is that they carry so much power that what you do for them is what you're going to reap in your own life as well. Is somebody following me now? You honor your father and your mother. Guess what's going to happen? Your own children will also what? Honor you. But you dishonor them. The harvest you're going to reap is that your own kids will also what? Dishonor you. Because what a man sow, God says he what he will reap. It's not just talking about what a man so means. Anything you sow. Words, money, habit, character, whatever you sow. If you sow dishonor, you will reap what? Dishonor. More especially in the place where God said honor people that deserve honor. When you dishonor, you're going to reap. So we are honoring our, our mothers because God commands us, number one. Number two, because they are being endowed by a this power from God. Why God did that, nobody can tell. Nobody can say, why did he invest so much power in parents, both biological parents and spiritual parents, to be a channel of blessing to our lives? It's only him that can. Why? 
In fact, I tell people in the Old Testament, in those days, thank God for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that broke the law of those days. If parents tell the elder that their children were rude to them, you know what the Bible says. What will happen to those kids? They will stone them to death. And God says, kill them so that evil can depart from the land. God considers evil as kids dishonoring their parents. Is, is somebody following me now? So, church, learn to honor parents. Learn to honor your father and your mother. Learn to, you know, place the value that God placed upon them. I mean, look at the sacrifice. Number three, the third reason, look at the sacrifice of their lives over our lives. I always tell, you know, tell my wife, I thank God I'm not a woman. I don't come as a woman. I just enjoy being a man. Even the man has his own soft food, you know. But you pregnant, you pregnant for, you know, 40 weeks or whatever weeks. And, you know, doing all this. And then number one, then number two. I mean, it's a lot. When, 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 in the middle of the night, when, when, when in the morning, when, 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 when in the afternoon, I mean, you change that part, you, I mean, thank God for husband. You know, we have some single parents that they just do everything by themselves. <laughs> so, the sacrifice. I remember growing up, my mother, she was such, such industrious. Wake up early in the morning, go for our business, go, you know, all day, you know, come back on the 6 p.m., 7 p.m., you know, and go to following morning, go day in, day out, day in, day out. Growing up saying that. And I, 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 so I remember so much labor over our lives. My father was, you know, trying his, his own best too, but my mother was, you know, all industrious. Never lazy, never always doing something to make, to, to make money. To, I remember there was, there was a time, you know, that she was the one, you know, giving me and my siblings money for this, money for that, money for that, money for this, even when we were in school. So, so much labor from the time, you know, they carry us in their womb, they give back to us, and they take care of us, and they, they are there, you know, you trip, you fall, you, you know, have a bruise, they take care of you, you, you know, that I'm not making sense from your first word to when you, when you, you know, kindergarten and, you know, and uh, pre-K and this and that. I, I mean, they are just there, always there, from the first step you take. So it's such an honor to honor them because of the sacrifice over our lives. Yeah, let's go ahead and celebrate them. The sacrifice is just so much. You know, the sacrifice is so much. So if you take the value of the price of their sacrifice, is a lot. So that is not that that is enough for us to even honor them. Am I making sense? That is enough to even honor them. That is why we cannot despise them. We must celebrate them every time. Celebrate this morning. You know, my, my mother and I met in the kitchen this morning. I pray with her, I pray for her, and I pray for her, and I bless her with prayer. Decree over our life, prophesy over our lives. Am I making sense? We pray for them. I pray for her regularly. My wife, my wife and I pray for our parents regularly, if not every day, regularly. For me, I pray for them every day. Both my mother and my mother-in-law, my father, I pray for them every day. Pray for them. Pray for strength. Pray for my wife and I pray together yesterday as husband and wife. We pray for our parents separately. We pray for strength, for health, for long life, for strength for them. You know, as they're getting older, we pray that God will increase their strength and we declare that the Lord of them will fall. Fall spiritually and fall physically. Is somebody following me now? That's the way to honor your parents. They are, you see, the price that they are paid over our lives make them to be more valuable than you can even imagine. Make them to be more valuable. Number four reason why we have to honor them this day and every day. Because they deserve the reward of their labor in our lives. Because what? They deserve the reward of their labor in our lives. 
The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that you will not labor in vain. You will live to reap the harvest of your labor. If you, do you, how many of you get your paycheck every month from your job? I think we all do, right? Uh, or two, two weeks, is it two weeks or one month? Or, but what are they, why, are you, why are they paying you your, your, your salary? Why? For your work, for your labor. So if, if our mothers have labor over our life, do you think they should reap the reward of their labor? Uh, yes, sir. The Bible says, for every labor come with what? Profit. Every labor come with profit. That's what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Every labor. So if they are labor over our life, do you think they should reap the profit of their labor? Yes. But one, of the, one of the prayers I prayed for my mother this morning was that I said, Mom, you will, you will live long to enjoy the harvest of your labor over your children. And I pray for all the mothers here in the name of Jesus Christ, those ones that already have kids, those ones that are going to have kids later on, you will live long to enjoy the, your labor, the harvest of your labor over your children. <laughs> Nobody else will enjoy it but you. No other woman will enjoy it but you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the laborer must be first what? The first partaker. The laborer must be what? The first partaker. The Bible says he that takes care of a fig tree, more also what? Eat thereof. So if they are labored over our lives, we decree that power of the blessing over them, they will enjoy the labor, they will enjoy the fruit of their labor in our lives in Jesus' name. Every woman, every mother is supposed to enjoy that. Because by the time you sow, by the time you reap, they have sown, they have sown and they have labored, but when it's time for them to enjoy, they must enjoy it. By the grace of God, myself and my sibling, we try as much as possible to make sure that, you know, our, our, you know our, our mother doesn't suffer anything. Whatever she needs, as best as we can, we get it for her. Am I making sense? We try all our best. All our best. So, we, they must enjoy the fruit of their labor. Everybody say, in Jesus' name, all the mothers in this house must enjoy and they will enjoy the harvest of their labor over their children. In Jesus' name. Amen. Number five, the last one. Why do you have to honor them today and, you know, regularly and every day? Honoring them and praising them infuses in them joy, strength, and health that they need for their life. Remember we read last week in the scripture, where there's no joy in the heart, it dries the bone. It's a sickness. It brings sickness to the body. If you want an elderly person to live long, all you need to do is just infuse joy into their lives. How do you infuse the joy? By honoring them. And there's no better way to do it than their own children honoring them. Infuse that joy, that strength that they need, that comfort, that peace. That's why the Proverbs chapter 31 we read, it says, our children will rise up and call our word blessed. Do you know what that is doing to her? Even The Bible says even her husband, if you read that place very well, the Bible says her husband sit in the gate with other men. He kept on talking about his wife all day. My wife, man, she's, man, she's awesome. She's a great woman. Oh, my goodness. And the Bible says even her husband will, will call what? We praise her. He give them strength. You don't even use the medication. He give them strength. He give them, when you feel that joy, that honor, that praise into their lives, he give them strength. Versus when, you know, the Bible says a rotten, a, a rotten child is a shame to our mother or to his mother. <laughs> they are everywhere doing wrong things, 
he caused the mother's pain. Do you know that he sent some mothers to their early graves? Quickly. Quickly. More than fathers. And I want to tell you the truth. More than father. You study the Bible very well. To their early graves quicker <laughs> than send their father to their early grave. But we want our mothers who live down to enjoy the fruit of their labor. Our, our job is to infuse strength and joy and comfort into their life by honoring them and praising them. He naturally he gives them strength and long life. And out of, everybody look at me, out of their heart, out of their spirit, they pronounce blessing over our lives. My mother will never cease praying for, for me and my wife and our siblings. Every time we do anything for her, she says, as you are taking care of me, God will take care of you. God will bless you. God will enrich you. God will increase your anointing. God will increase. I mean, you can imagine saying that to me every day. And I say, Amen, mommy, Amen. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Amen, Amen. I receive it. Is somebody following me now? And that's how that's how it's supposed to be. That's the power of the blessing. That's the power of the blessing. So we must learn this truth, this unchangeable fact. They are settled forever. There's it's more than this, but we just you know because of our time, just you know. So you must understand God's perspective about honoring our parents. Moses Ali, as we are honoring our mother today, and don't let it stop today. Don't let it stop today. Let it be a continuous thing. Daily, daily, we honor them. He will make our lives to prosper, and the Bible says so that it can be well with us so that we can have long life. When parents begin to say, you will live long, uh, 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 like I said, I was li listening to Bishop Duncan yesterday. He said his, his older sister and his mom, they were always fighting growing up. Always, you know, fighting and fighting. They would scream at each other. They would say, what is wrong with these two people? Then the mother would say, oh, you wait. You wait until you start having children. You will see how it hurts. What you are doing to me, you see, you see how it hurts to be hurting me. Your kids will also hurt you the same way. She said, so what happened when she now got married? I was listening to it yesterday. He said, that when she now got married, every time she wanted to have kids, she would go through trauma. They had to cut her open. They had to do this. The first child, the second child, said, the, the third one, I think, he said he was preaching somewhere, somewhere, somewhere here, either in Maryland, I think, it was in Maryland or in Ghana, I can't remember. He said, the Holy Ghost told him, go and pick up your phone and call your brother-in-law. So he said, he had this old clarity. So he went to pick up his phone. He called his brother-in-law. And brother-in-law said, how did you know? He said, know what? How's my sister doing? He said, well, she's not doing well. She's in the uh, ICU right now. And uh, I don't know what is going on with her. It's like she's, she's dying, this and this and that. And he said, the Holy Spirit told, please listen to this. The Holy Spirit told him, call your mother quick and tell her to begin to pray for her, for her and forgive her every wrongdoing she had done against your mother. She said, he said, Bishop Duncan said, he called the mother, mama, this and this and this and that's what the Spirit of God just told me. The mother said, I didn't do anything to your sister. He said, well, the Spirit of God cannot lie. The Spirit of God didn't say you do anything. He just said, Forgive her and begin to reverse everything you have said, you know, knowingly and unknowingly. So, so they put the mother on the phone in the ICU. The mother began to pray on the phone and pray. She is well with you. You are blessed. You, you know, ease in your body, comfort in your body, this and this. Within a few minutes, she came back to life and totally healed. And she gave that naturally for the first time. So he, he said, I learned a new thing that day that this thing is just so powerful. People just don't understand that they don't know it. And they don't, they don't realize and they don't practice it. Now, I was listening to that message. I was shaking my head yesterday. I said, <laughs> how, where will the church, the Christian, understand the power of this, you know, of all this truth? Verse 
the law of honor. Can I tell you one more thing? Whatever you honor, listen to me, everybody. Whatever you honor, we appreciate in your life. Whatever you dishonor, you lose value. And when you lose this value, it can't add any value to you. Ever. But whatever you honor, increase in value in your life and it add more value to your life. Is somebody following me now? So, understand this powerful truth and live with them. Let them work for you. They are for our lifting. They are for what? Our lifting. If we dishonor them, it's for, to our own disadvantage. If we honor them, it's for our advantage. Don't forget, you also reap what you sow. But above all, they, they are channel of empowerment for our life to be meaningful on earth. Praise the Lord. Lastly, I also want to make, give a charge to all our mothers. As blessed as they are, as honorable as they are, that's a charge I want to give to our, to, our, to our mother at the same time. Isaiah 62, verse 6 to 7. Please, quickly, Isaiah 62, verse 6 to 7. Isaiah 62, verse 6 to 7. I want us to read this together. And I, I will back it up with a story uh, from the gospel with Jesus Christ. Can we read this together? I really want us to read it together. I want to let go. I have set a watchman upon the walls. This is God speaking. He said, I have set watchmen, watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem. We shall never walk, hold their peace day or night. That means they will pray day and night. You that what make mention of the Lord, keep no word silent. Do not keep silent. You that make mention of the Lord. That is why, you know, uh, our women are coming to have night visit this Friday night. They never stop praying. We must be a praying church. We must be a praying family. We must be a praying parents, praying mother, praying father, praying pastors. Am I making sense? Say, you that make mention of the Lord, what did he say? Keep not silent. Verse 7. He says, and give no rest. See, everybody look at me. <laughs> oh, I lo everybody say, open check. <laughs> if somebody comes to you and says, Shadi, this is an open check. Write whatever you want there and go cash it. What will you write there? A lot. Like how much? I want to tap in your mind. Like how much? $50,000. Oh, that's too cheap. Like a thank you, like a billion dollars. <laughs> Am I making sense? Now, everybody watch this. Watch, watch what's going on. God say, can you go back to the previous verse? Look at what God says. God says, you that make mention of my name, don't do what? Don't keep silent. Then look at the next verse, verse 7. It now says, verse 7, and give no rest. God said, don't give me any rest. What an open check. Okay. God, until I see you do it, I won't give you rest. Say, and give, give him no rest. Don't give the Lord what? Any rest. God say, I'm the Lord. You make mention of my name, don't give me rest. Until he established, until God established, until he make Jerusalem a place in the earth. Mothers, listen to me. Don't give God rest over your children. Until you see them become what you want them to become in life, don't give the Lord a rest. Please, Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter, if you can show us in NIV, Matthew chapter 20 from verse, from verse 20. Can we read this together? Please, everybody, if you can join me. Jesus Christ, everybody watch this. Jesus Christ was going with the disciples. The 12 disciples, okay? And all of a sudden, he heard the voice of a woman and stopped him. Can we read this together? Then the mother, did he say the father? The brother? No. The who? The mother. Who are we celebrating today? Mother. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons. Please, I need, I need two men. I need, I need two Where's that? Jeff, Jeff, come. Jeff and who? Robert, come. Come. 
I wrote down. Sa um, how am I going to use that? I need, I need a, Sean, come. You come play Jesus. Come play Jesus. So I'm just going to play. Act as a matter of fact, Shadi, let's do it. Shadi, come. Let me be the narrator. Okay, you are Mrs. Zebedee. This is J the two sons of uh, uh, our sons are um, John and James. So this is John and this is James. Hold their hand. So this is Jesus. Okay? So Jesus Christ was going and just said, Master Jesus, one second, sir. Read, read it. It says, <laughs> it says, the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down, kneeling down. Everybody look at me. Watch this. She understand honor. So the first thing she, she did was to honor the Lord. She kneeled down. Not standing face to face with the Lord. She kneeled down showing that I bring my request out of humility to you as a mother. Okay? But Jericho taught us, Jericho himself said, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask, it shall be what? It shall be given. And we just heard it say, do not give the Lord what? A rest. So, he said, what is it that you want? He asked, she said, grant. Go back, go back to verse 20. Go back to verse 20. He says, kneeling now, ask a favor of him. A favor of him. Ask a favor of him. <laughs> My God. Everybody hear me. The desire of a mother to see her children become great in life. We drive her to our knees before the Lord every day. Until I see them become what I wanted to become, I will not give you rest. No mother was recorded in the scripture or in the Bible anywhere that did what she did. So the Bible says, let's go on. The Bible says, what is it that you want? Yoka, you ask her, what is it that you want? Now, everybody watch this. She was requesting something that never requested by any human being ever. Whether she understood the gravity of what she was asking, but she was bold enough anyway to go to the Lord. Oh, you may say, Jesus Christ says, let, look at what Jesus Christ says. You don't know what you are asking, but Jesus, you say you should ask anyway. Jesus said to them, can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can. They answer. Let's go on. Jesus, Christ, Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared, prepared for by my father. Okay? Now, because Jesus Christ himself could not, please go to John chapter 14, verse 14. Because Jesus Christ could not by himself alone do that. But look at what he said in John chapter 14, verse 14. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Mothers, I double dare you, you cry to God on behalf of your kids. Jesus Christ says he will grant you your request. Even though Jesus Christ couldn't do this, but any other thing that the mother would have asked him, he would have done it. Because this is an eternal issue that he, won't, he can only be settled by God the Father himself. But whatever you want your kids to turn out to be in life, from protection to success, you cry to the Lord, crying to God, and with boldness and by faith. She believed that the Lord will answer her, and she went. Is somebody following now? As a matter of fact, go to, the, you know, let me just add a little bit. Go, to back, go back to that scripture and read the next thing. The next thing says, when the ten heard about this, they were indignant <laughs> with the two brothers. Excuse me, why did your own mama come and tell Jesus Christ what your mama want for you? Don't holler at me. That's your mama's problem. My mama was bold enough to come to Jesus Christ and ask, am I making sense? He said, that's your problem. He can get angry. I don't care. But thank God, 
Yeah, yeah, let's stand up. Oh. Mrs. Zebedee. <laughs> but everybody, did you, did you get what I'm trying to tell you? Mothers, God said, don't give me rest until I establish your children. Can we rise up on our feet, please? Jesus, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you because their requests will always be granted. There's something about mothers. There's something about mothers putting their requests to the Lord. There's something about honoring them. He gladdens the heart of God. He made God himself to just want to be to be a blessing to our lives. I don't have time. I will assure you over and over how mothers in the Bible pressure themselves for their children to succeed. By, 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 by not reading the scripture, I can give you one or two. Remember the mother of Jacob when Isaac wanted to bless Esau and Jacob and they had to twist everything around. And Jacob said, Mama, I don't want Daddy to find out and put a curse on me. You know what the mother, you know what um, Rebecca said? Let the curse be on me. Oh my goodness. She is ready to suffer for, his, for her son. Is somebody following me now? Do you remember the, the Shunammite woman? Her son died. She carried her son and she called the servant, place the child on the donkey. And the, 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 father, the father was asking, is everything okay? She told her husband, it is well. And she told the driver, run to the prophet now. Don't stop until I tell you to stop. The prophet said, what's wrong? Shut up. Just keep on riding. And the child was dead. She went to the prophet. The prophet said, is everything okay? She said, it is well. When she entered the room of the prophet, she put the baby down. I told you. You prophesied I will have this child. Man of God, if you are the man of God, fix this problem. She, she's dead. The man of God said, God, you can't do this to us. And the man made sure that they call on God and God brought the child back to life. The desire of the mother. It, maybe if she had told the man, the man would have said, eh, he's a child of old age, let's just accept it. Let's go bury him. The mother said, it is well. Positive word, it is well. It is where until she saw that her, her child come back, came back to life. I'm showing you that mother, that's, that's a power in you. That when you press God with all the desire of your heart for your children, he will come to pass. God will grant you your request. Did somebody follow me now? Over and over again, I'll give you instances, examples. But this day, we're going to pray for our mothers and we're going to, you know, uh, eat uh, our communion. And every prayer we pray, we're going to seal it with the blood of Jesus Christ. But I want, you know what I want us to do? No, I just wait, wait. Let's, let's pray for um, uh, women. Just go, 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 go back. Let's go back. I'm going to pray. And I want all the men to agree with me. We want to pray for all the mothers. And I, I want all the men to agree with me. I want to pray for all the mothers and all the men to just agree with me. Is somebody following me now? So I'm facing you. You're standing on behalf of the men. Can I have some men to just come around? Let's have some men. David, please come, come, come forward. Daniel, men. Vicky and Felix, just one of the, yeah, Darius, come. Come and stand with me. Let's just. Come and agree with me. want to pray for all the mothers. Barani, come, come, come. Come. Yeah, come. Everybody, come. Come. Yeah, just come. Yeah, you're going to agree with me. I'm going to pray. Yeah. So just, just agree with me. So all the mothers in the house. See, the Bible says, and the husband. We are all husbands. <laughs> see, the husband will rise up and praise them. We are all children. Say the children, we call them what? Blessed. 
So as I pronounce, you just agree with me. As you are pronounced over these mothers, you just agree with me by praying along with me. Uh, you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Just let us stretch forth our hands towards them. And I want all the mothers to just receive our uh, blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand as men in Christ. We stand as men of God. We stand as children of God. We want to see our desires as men, as husbands. Our Lord, come to pass in the lives of our mothers and all these wonderful wives that you have blessed us with. Lord, we pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ. We rise up this day. We stand and we call them blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Every mother here is blessed in their lives, blessed in the work of their hands, blessed in their health, blessed in their going out, blessed in their coming in, in the name of Jesus Christ, blessed in their homes, blessed all the days of their lives. The blessing of God will rest mightily upon you. We praise you. You will always be honorable all the days of your lives. The honor of God will not depart from you. You will live long to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will not have sorrow over your household. Amen. You will not have sorrow over your children. Amen. You will not have sorrow over your husband. Amen. You will not have sorrow over your destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray in Jesus' name. All your heart desire over your family, over your children, over your household will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God grant them. We stand in agreement with you as we are not giving God rest, neither are we keeping silent. All your desire will come to pass over your children. Amen. All your desires of your heart will come to pass over your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. we decree good health, Amen. sound health, Amen. soundness of mind Amen. into your lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. life will be easy for you. Amen. Life will be easy for you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we use you as a point of contact to all the women that are connected to this church and all the women that are connected to, to every member of this church, wherever they are on the surface of the earth, as we are decree over the mothers in this house, over the women, so shall it be for them today in Jesus' name. Amen. By the Spirit of the living God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father Lord. We pray again in Jesus' name that heavens be open over you. Amen. The heavens of blessing. The heavens of elevation, Amen. the heavens of favor, Amen. the heavens of honor, Amen. the heavens of fruitfulness, Amen. the heavens of prosperity, Amen. the heavens of divine health, Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father Lord. You are marked with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. No mother will die young in this church. Amen. No member of this church will die young. Amen. No member of our family member that connected to this church will die young. We we'll all live long in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For we long like God will satisfy us Amen. according to the word of God Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can we celebrate the King of Glory? Amen. Okay. Now, that's one of the ways to honor the Now, ushers, come and help me, please. So let's just. I want to make sure we finish before 12. So we're going to take part of our communion, the body of your Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, this, the, the word of God says, Jesus Christ himself says, as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. Jesus Christ is our Lord, our Savior, our healer, our deliverer. Your Christ says, because I live, you will also live. I think that should be uh, John 8.29, I think. John 8.29. Uh, let me see. I think John 8.29. So because I live. No, no, no. no it, that's not it. Um, don't worry about it. It's just a something. It said, because I live, you also live. Because I live, you also live. Because he lives, we also what? Live. What can make us live? than the body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, listen to me very carefully. The Bible says his body was broken so that we can have divine healing and divine health. His blood, I I'm, I'm, I'm studying the book of um, Revelation, and I'm, I'm looking at chapter 12, 
the power of the, of the blood of Jesus Christ, how the dragon, Satan, the devil, the deceivers, the accuser of the brethren, how the Bible says they overcame, overcame him by the blood of the lamb in heaven. This blood is more powerful than an atomic bomb. <laughs> it's more powerful than any weapon in heaven and earth. And this is exactly what we want to bring into our body. So if this blood can cast out, destroy the, 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 you know, the attack of, the, of, of Satan in heaven and they cast him out, how much more when he's now defeated? Is somebody following me now? Yes. So as we partake of the body of Jesus Christ and drink the blood of Jesus Christ, we decree that every power invested, embedded in the body of Jesus Christ and his blood, the power of healing, the power of deliverance, the power of transformation, be released into our bodies and into our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every affliction of the devil, every sickness, every, uh, uh, every oppression of the devil be destroyed in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we decree every attack of the enemy be overturned by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every weapon the enemy have formed against us, against our mothers, against the church, we decree they are overturned by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is a restorer. Amen. He says, there's none that say restore. Yet he said, I will restore unto you your health. He said, I will restore unto you years the enemy have stolen. So therefore we decree. Anything that the devil has stolen in the life of our mothers, anything the enemy has stolen in the life of any one of us, here, maybe health, maybe joy, maybe dignity, maybe honor, whatever he has stolen, maybe finances, we decree restoration by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anything that is not working in our life that's supposed to be working, we decree by the blood of Jesus Christ, they begin to walk in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that the enemy have give, given life to they are not supposed to be living, we decree they die from the roots in our bodies and in our lives in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Lord. Lord, we now pray by your blood, by your body, that we have encounters with you. We will know you better. We will love you. And we will please you like your can please you. All the days of life, we decree thirst and hunger for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead. So it is written, Jericho took the bread, he blessed it, and he said, take it, for this is my flesh that will be broken for you. In the name of Jericho, we describe that when the body of Jericho we are healed and made whole in Jesus' name. It is written, Jericho took the cup, he blessed it, and he said, take drink. This is blood of my new covenant that is here for renewing your sins and many. We drink the blood of Jesus Christ and everything we have decreed, we have prayed for today, begin to manifest in our lives, in our bodies, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are seated. Praise the Lord. What a powerful message. Were you all blessed today? That was some really good work. Can we give God glory for that word? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for that word. Thank God. So we're going to go ahead and take our tithes and our offering. Um, so offering time. We have the ushers to go around. If you need an envelope, you can just raise your hand and the ushers will come to you. It looks like most people have um, using F1 Go, but we do have in the front um, Miss Nicole. But she has an envelope, but she's, I think, ready to uh, put in the basket. Praise God. Thank God. Let's just bow our heads. Father God, in Jesus' name, we just thank you so much. We appreciate you, oh God. And we also wish you, Lord, happy Mother's Day because as a mother, you comfort us. And even if a mother forgets, which they do forget, but you never forget us. And for that, we are so glad and we're grateful to you, Father, for always remembering us, never sleeping or slumbering. 
We appreciate you. And as we come this day, given unto you from that which you're given unto us, we ask to be acceptable for you. We thank you that you rebuke the vow for our sake. Thank you that you bless us back in abundance. We thank you that this tithes and offering that we are paying, that we are, they were given back unto you, O oh God. They indeed will open doors for us of favor, a breakthrough, a blessing, all around protection in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we celebrate your car one more time? Amen. So, is there, is there, can we just bow our head and we'll pray as we bring the, the service to an end. Father, we thank you for this day. Now, one more thing quickly. If you're here as we're praying, God sacrificed his son, son, Jesus Christ, so that we can have eternity with him. God wants to forgive every one of us of our sins and wash us clean with his blood. And the best way to do it is when you are here this moment and you have an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ and just ask him to forgive you your sins and wash you clean with his blood. If there's anybody here you want me to pray with you, you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to be your Lord, your Savior, forgive you your sins, wash you clean with his blood. I'm I will be glad to pray with you. All you need to do is just raise up your hands and I will pray with you. If there's anybody like that, anybody like that, Jesus Christ said nobody can come to my Father except through me. Anybody like that, I will just pray with you. Anybody? And you want to rededicate your life? Anybody? Uh, Father, we thank you again. We appreciate you. We give all the glory, give all the praise. I accept our thanks and our praise. And we thank you for answer prayers in Jesus' name. Now, is there anybody coming for the first time? Okay, are you ready? Anybody coming for the first time? Please. Okay. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Yeah. Our sister here, one of our sisters here, one of welcome you properly, and you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. God bless you. Your life never remains the same. Amen. Amen. Anybody coming for the second time?